Hi, welcome to this SQL tutorial video and today we're going to look at the makeup of a SQL statement. So SQL statements can be broken down into very specific um, parts and that's what we're going to focus on today. Uh, in order to appreciate this video you need to have a basic understanding of a SQL statement and um, for those that don't, I've included links to five very short videos that should kind of bring you up to speed and allow you to uh, understand what I'm about to show you. So on screen, we've got a very basic SQL statement. Select all data from a table. And you might think that's as basic as a SQL statement would get, but that isn't true. So I'm going to get rid of the table. Um, I can't run select star, but I can run select something. And if I run that, um, in the results, I get the number one. I put here, select one, it returns the number one. I can say select hello and it returns hello. And I can give my, the data that's returned an alias. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, if I press this, I now get what looks like a column called alias with the word hello in. Um, I don't have to just put in uh, simple numbers. I can put in a calculation. So select 20 times 13. If I run that, it will return the results of 20 times 13 or whatever I put in here. Or I can concatenate strings. I can say um, plus, um, I mean, this isn't a very good example, but um, and we can return the result of what I've typed here. And we don't have to just put numbers or text in there. We can put in a function. So if I put get date, get date returns the current date and time from the data, from the um, server. So if I run this, it'll return me the current date and time. And if I execute that again, you can see the times, the seconds are ticking away. And if I run it again, um, it's gone to 12.35. So this is the exact time that I pressed execute on this statement. Now let's go back to our original select. We give it an alias if I run that. This is kind of what people are going to begin with when they're writing select statements. Select star from a table. Now already we've got two very distinct parts to our SQL. A select, which is what do I want to see? What data do I want in my results? And the from, which is where is the data held? that I want to return in my select. Um, in the select, if I put select star, it will return everything. Or I can say I'm only interested in the full name and the department, and it will return just those two columns. In the from, I uh, at minimum, I'm going to have a single table in my from block, but I can add more tables. So I can say in the join to um, if I run that, we now get more data um, with data from our departments. So in our from block, if you like, we're going to have a, a from table, inner join, left out of join, right out of join, cross join, some sort of joins to one or more tables. The minimum we're going to have is that in our from, um, but we can have as many joints as we like, as long as we're going to be returning the data, you know, whatever data we need. So now I've got that, <clears throat> I can change my select star to include data from the other table. So I can say, um, and run that, and now we're getting data from both tables. So there are two distinct blocks or, or areas in our SQL. Select what do I want to see and where's the data. The next is the conditions. How are we going to limit that data? So if I just run this. Um, so the conditions begin with where. Where, um, um, <coughs> where department equals, and then I'll just drag that up here, FNL1. Uh, we can have more than one condition. And if we're going to add more than one condition, 
We can't put where, 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 where. Where is the beginning of our conditions block? If we're going to have more than one condition, we do an and. Um, so we'll do a higher date greater than um, 1st of Jan 2020. And that limits our data some more. We could do as many ands as you want. We can add ors. There's all sorts of things we can do in this conditions block. And the last thing that we'll put in here, the the the, the kind of the block um, following those three will be order by. So we've got four distinct kind of parts to our SQL. Select what is it we want to return from which tables does the data reside in that we want to return? Where, what's our filters in order to limit the data that we want to see? And then we've got an order by. And that's kind of the four distinct areas of a SQL statement. Um, in the order by, you, you, there's more options we can put in there. So let us imagine... I'm going to change my filters so that we're going to return everything. So if I change that to be 2016, we should return it, pretty much everything. Um, so in here, actually, now what, now what I'm going to say is I want the department name and the amount of people in that department. So I want to do a count uh, on based on department name. And um, account is an aggregate function. And when we use aggregate functions, we've got to group by uh, columns. And in this case, the column we're going to group by is department name. So I'm going to do group by department name. Um, oh, yes. And actually, I'm no longer returning full name. So I can't have full name in the order by. So actually, I'll do order by department name. Now, what we've got is a group by statement. And that will go in the bottom here as well, alongside the order by. We can also, with an aggregate function, have something called having, which is how we uh, add conditions to aggregate data. So if I do having, I can say count greater than um, four. And I'll run that, and now we get limited data again based on this having clause. The point is that group by having an order all belong in the same bit at the very bottom of a SQL statement. And a little bit more to that, they have got to appear in a very particular order. So if I were to move the group by below the having, I will get an error. If I were to move it below the order by, I get an error. Um, and the same way if I were to move the having or the order, they've got to be in this particular order. Group by, having, order by, if you're going to use all three. And a way to remember the order is it is alphabetical, G-H-O. So that's kind of neat. So a SQL statement in this case is built up of four distinct areas. What data do you want to see? Where's the data held that you want to return? Uh, what are the conditions that you want to limit it? Um, and that's the where clause, although the having does is part of that because of the count. And finally, the bottom bit, the group by having an order by in that order. Now, hopefully... Um, that made sense. If you've got any questions or queries, please let me know. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day.